Hey y'all, I'm Derek and welcome back to Bad Movie Friday Night. So tonight, as the March of the Living Dead continues, we're going to be looking at a zombie film from one of my favorite zombie movie directors, Lucio Fulci. Lucio Fulci began his directing career in the 1960s, directing spaghetti westerns. In the 70s, his career began slowing down, with fewer films coming his way until he took a job co-writing and directing a quasi-sequel, quasi-ripoff of George Romero's Dawn of the Dead. The film, titled Zombie in the United States, has become a cult favorite and soon propelled Fulci into cult figurehead status, leading to his most prolific period, which continued until his death in the 1990s. This movie isn't zombie. This is actually another one of Fulci's zombie movies called The Beyond. Actually, in this case, Seven Doors of Death. It has a different title depending on who released it. And it's the second movie in his Undead trilogy, and it's a bit of an oddball. But we'll get to that when we get to that. So to go along with the movie, tonight I'm cooking fried Creole pies because it's set in Louisiana. Right now, I'm just cooking off the trinity of Cajun cooking. That's bell pepper, onion, and celery. And to that, I'm adding a spoonful of flour so that we get a nice roux. So let's get started. Our film begins in the 1920s, which you can tell because of the sepia tone and the old-timey clothing. Okay, it's supposed to be the Louisiana Bayou, and the villagers are approaching a hotel complete with torches and pitchforks. A girl reads from the Book of Avon, another fine tome in the ancient Book of MacGuffin series of books. Available now for a limited time. Get it today and have your own plot run smoothly and unexplained. And the villagers burst into an artist's room and, and start beating him silly. Why? I'm not exactly sure, but I'm certain he deserved it. Well, they take him down to the basement and kill him. And I just have to point out, I absolutely love how they happen to have Lie available. Oh, the goblins have started playing, so the credits must be coming up. So now that that's over with, let's finish our stuffing. So we've browned our roux. And to that, I'm going to add some diced chicken. Some andouille sausage. A can of diced tomatoes. And some of my Cajun curry spice mix. Add as much as you want, I like a lot. So after the sauce is thickened and the meat's thoroughly cooked, we're gonna take this off the heat and just let it cool down a bit. Cut to the hotel in 1981, and Liza, that's with a Z, played by Catherine McCall, has just inherited the property. She's trying to renovate the house, and one of the workers fall off a scaffold, muttering something about eyes. But that's just really a clunky transition to meet our other lead, Dr. John, who takes the worker to the hospital, just in time for Joe the plumber to show up to figure out why the basement is flooding. Probably because the hotel is literally on a bayou. And since that's below the water level, that's why houses on the bayou don't have basements. So Liza takes Joe to the basement, where we meet Martha, one of the housekeepers, and the film tries to build tension between Joe and Martha for... reasons? Well, Joe goes to find the leak, and it goes about as well as you think it would in a zombie film. Well, that escalated quickly. So let's make our pastry. In this bowl, I sifted together some flour, baking powder, and salt, and to that I cut in about six tablespoons of shortening, just until it looks like a coarse meal. And to that, a little bit at a time, I'm adding a slurry of milk and beaten egg. Stirring in between pours, just until the dough comes together. Okay, so Liza goes to town, and on the Ponch train bridge, she nearly runs over a blind woman named Emily, who takes Liza to her house. At the same time, Martha finds Joe dead in the basement, and also finds a badly decomposed body. Jump back to Emily and Liza, where Emily warns Liza to give up the hotel. Now, I would be wondering why this 
complete stranger knows my business, why she cares, and how the heck she ended up in the middle of the Pontchartrain Bridge by herself. But that might be my suspicious nature. Joe and the dead body are taken to the hospital, and Joe's family comes to dress him for a funeral. Joe ends up killing his wife, in a way, and his daughter sees it all. What about the girl she saw it all? Hey, if I see a Tommy reference, I'm gonna take it. And Dr. John meets Liza in town, where she explains how she got the hotel and how it came with Martha and her son, Arthur. Strange. I've never heard of them. Because, you know, as a doctor, I know every living person in New Orleans and the outlying parishes. Jump to the funeral of Joe and his wife, and we learn his daughter Jill has gone blind. She didn't hear it. She didn't see it. Hey, I warned y'all. And then it's the middle of the night, and Emily shows up at the hotel and explains the history of the hotel. She warns Liza to stay out of room 36 and runs off into the night. So let's make our pies. All I did was take a small pinch of the dough and roll it out flat, then trimmed it up. Now, I'm just going to add a spoon of our mix. And then we're going to seal it like we do with all of our other pies. Just a little bit of water. And then flip over. Press it down. And then just let it dry. So what does our female lead do once she's told not to go into room 36? She goes into room 36, where she finds the Book of MacGuffin, and also a corpse in the bathtub. Luckily, the deus ex machina is strong in this movie, so Dr. John just randomly shows up and the horror of the room just disappears. Why? So Dr. John can call Liza crazy. He is such a likable and relatable lead character, isn't he? Okay, the next day, Liza and her architect are in town, and the architect goes to see the blueprints of the hotel, and that gets pretty... spidery. Nope! Can't do spiders, they freak me out. Next scene, next scene. Dr. John goes to Emily's house, finds it abandoned, but does find the ancient book of MacGuffin. Call today and we'll even throw in a copy of the Necronomicon. Absolutely free. Dr. John reads the book, and Martha goes to clean room 36, where she finds a major drain block in the bathtub. As she cleans it, Joe's corpse appears and kills her. At the same time, Emily is brutally murdered. Liza returns and goes into the basement looking for her housekeepers, and that really ends well. Dr. John returns just to call Liza a liar, and is immediately shown up by the house. Okay, so we're getting to the climax, so let's fry our pies. All we're going to do is fry them up in batches until they're golden brown. Then we're going to move them to a tray of paper towels so that they can air dry. They run to the hospital, but find it vacant. Thankfully, like all good southern doctors, John keeps a magic revolver in his office. And I say magic because as you watch this movie, he fires that six-shooter 24 times before reloading. That's amazing. So they run through the hospital, killing zombies and whatnot, and they end up back in the basement of the hotel. No, I did not jump ahead. They literally end up back at the basement in the hotel. They don't even know how it happened. And they run through the basement and into a bleak landscape filled with dead bodies. And that's the end of the movie. And now our pies are done. So we're just going to put them on a nice stylish plate and let people take them as they wish. So, final thoughts on the film. This movie is unusual. It's a gothic, almost Lovecraftian tale of despair which no one survives. Its pacing is a bit slow, and the climax is somewhat mild given the buildup. The color palette is very muted, but that's understandable considering the dark tone. Fulci knows how to build tension, but in this film he goes a bit overboard, adding tension where it isn't needed. 
This film isn't as visually striking as Zombie or City of the Living Dead, but that's not to say there aren't any engaging sights. All in all, it's a weird, gory tale, but I do recommend it. If you're a gore hound, it'll fill your desire for blood. If you are a fan of badly translated dubbing, you might enjoy this. So gather up your friends, fry up some nice pies, and lasez le bon temps roulé. Well, thanks for stopping by, thanks for tuning in, and come back next week as we look at one of my favorite zombie horror comedies as The March of the Living Dead continues. Mm -hmm.